This is 49ers Talk brought to you by Big O Tires. It's Matt and Laura. We're back for another episode of 49ers Talk, and we're going to talk about the 49ers. It's almost like we never left. But you know what? Before we talk about the 49ers, I want to tell you a little story, Laura, about- I love story time with you, Matt. Yeah, this is, this is interesting. I was at a get-together Saturday night, and there was a young man, probably early 20s, from West Seattle. And he's a big Seahawks fan. And there was a big fan of the 49ers, a guy who grew up in the city, went to SI. So he's San Francisco through and through. These two got into an argument about Russell Wilson. Oh, yeah. It was, tell it was me more. It was fascinating. One of the people said, Oh, Russell Wilson's not very good. You know, he's, they've only won one Super Bowl with him when they had all this great talent around him. He's not very good. I, I, you know, blah, blah, blah. And the other guy's going, Are you kidding me? What are you talking about? He's not very good. He runs around, he makes plays, blah, blah, blah. And then the other guy goes, Yeah, he runs around and he gets sacked. So I've kind of left the big part out of this. Which fan yes. was talking about him being bad and which one was talking about him being good? I'm guessing because it's a story that it was the Niners fan that was talking about Wilson being so good. Yes. But I was sitting there in amazement listening to this going, wow, you know, Russell Wilson's never missed a game. Seattle wins twice as many games as they lose with him there. He's put up fantastic numbers. He, and I'm amazed that, you know, and I'm sure this isn't reflective of the entire Seattle Seahawks fan base, but to hear this young guy ripping on Russell Wilson, and this kid was a, he's a Seahawks fan. I was floored by this. And I'm thinking- No respect. Put some respect on Russell Wilson's name. Yeah. So anyway, this was at a, a graduation party. And so in honor of graduation, Laura, how about if we devote most of this podcast to which 49ers player is ready to graduate this season and take a huge step forward. I like that. Yeah. And this was kind of encouraged or motivated by, uh, we, we threw it out there, you know, any questions on Twitter and one of the questions. Did you actually say that though? Did you say any questions? I think I said we will That's, answer anything, which is dangerous. kind of dangerous. Yeah. Did, well, what was the response? Because I didn't get, I didn't read, I normally will retweet you. I didn't get the chance to do that because we're in the middle of moving, by the way, which is thrilling. I'm sure all of you listening know. Um, are you taking, anyway. are, you, are you going to like ask people to show up and, you know, carry a couch, a couch upstairs or something? <laughs> I might. Don't put it past me. I might ask. Um, but I didn't get the chance to retweet. So was the response 49ers questions? Yes. Or? I was, exp as soon as I hit tweet, I was like, that's what you do, right? You hit tweet. Um, I thought, oh, I shouldn't have asked for any and all questions or, you know, what, ask us anything, I believe is the way I phrased it. And as soon as I, as soon as I tweeted that, I was like, oh boy, this could be Ooh. bad. Yeah. Ooh. But however, every question was a 49ers question. Um, and by the way, one person even, uh, did you notice the shirt I'm wearing here? Yes, we haven't even talked about the shirt. So if you're listening on the podcast, Mayoko has on the I Survived the 21 yeah. draft. There were there no were guarantees. Days. Yeah. Um, so anyway, one person sent in a picture of the shirt and said, I just got mine and I just got mine as well. But one of the questions uh, came from Event Horizon 209. Uh, Do you think Ross Dwelly makes the biggest leap this year? Dude looks beefed up. And so that got me thinking like, well, Ross Dwelly, I think, can only do so much because as long as George Kittle is healthy and, and playing well, well, of course, if he's healthy, he's going to be playing well. So I don't know how much room for improvement as far as statistically Ross Dwelly has. He had 19 catches for 245 yards last season. So I think Dwelly is a good player, and I think Charlie Werner is a good player. Um, and so I think that those two guys behind Kittle were the reasons that the 49ers didn't feel like they needed to go out and draft a, a tight end. But I don't know that he's necessarily going to take that next step because I just don't know how many times you're going to have two tight ends out there on the field. I but, couldn't agree more. Yeah, but his question, even Horizon 209's question, led me to think, okay, 
which players are capable of taking that next step? And, you know, I, I was kicking around some names. Laura, do you have any, anyone in mind that, that you kind of look to and go, yeah, this could be the year that so-and-so breaks out? I think the first thing that comes to mind for me is just the wide receiver core. I think there's a lot of opportunity there because they really haven't had a true go-to number one wide receiver. I think Debo Samuel has been that, but I think, I think this year is the year that you're going to see somebody stand out far above the rest. Like when Emmanuel Sanders came in, you know, what is Emmanuel Sanders to a team? He's been a true number one wide receiver. What is Julio Jones to a team? Oh, are you going to say Julio Jones? Dare I say that? (laughs) We might have to talk about him a little later, by the way. I think we should talk about him later. What is he to a team? He's a true number one wide receiver. I think the 49ers have have missed that consistent number one wide receiver. So I'm going to say either Debo Samuel or Brandon Ayuk, and it's hard to say they're going to have a breakout year. They're going to have a graduation year because they're already so good. But I do think I'll put my cards – with Debo Samuel or Brandon Ayuk. Oh, I, I like that too. I, I think that both of those guys are capable of thousand yard seasons. And I, I do kind of look at the, the wide receiver position and the running back position in the sense that you really haven't broken out until you have that first thousand yard season. And, and Brandon Ayuk had a really good rookie year. He missed some games. Debo Samuel had a really good rookie year, but then his second year, he missed some games and you know, didn't take that next step. So I think both of those guys are are very good. And, you know, the same thing kind of goes with them a little bit in that, you know, there's only one football and George Kittle's going to get his catches. You know, he's going to be up there around the, the thousand yard mark. So if one of those other guys can take that next step, I think the 49ers offense will be looking pretty good. And, and since I mentioned the running backs, what about Raheem Mostert? You know, he hasn't, you know, his best year was in 2019, 772 yards. And last year, you know, he was poised to have a big year, but, you know, he got injured and, and missed quite a few games. So he's, he's another guy that I'd kind of keep an eye on. Yeah, and it is, it is kind of strange to say Raheem Mostert graduating too. I think that's what's so hard about this question is it's been such a true team effort on the 49ers part, especially with all the injuries that they've had that you almost feel wrong saying Raheem Mostert's going to graduate. I mean, he's been yeah. such a, a strong back for the Niners, but I agree. I mean, I think, I, I think he's a good one. I, the only potential trouble I see there with him graduating is all – I say graduating. He's not graduating high school. He's already in the NFL. But graduating to that next tier, I guess, is the fact that the 49ers now have this stocked running back core. Yeah. So our, you know, Shanahan has tended to be a committee, a more of a committee type of running back use using head coach. And there's a lot of hyphens in there. Yeah. Running back using head head coach. Yeah. I was, I was trying to make it work. I think, I think, I think it did. I think it did. did. Yeah. Yeah, A very heavy committee running back using head coach. So I guess right off the tongue. Here's maybe the better way to say it. Maybe graduating to like pro bowl status. How's there that? you go. Yeah, yeah, I think that's good. Another guy that I think the 49ers would love to see, and I know the fan base would love to see, take that next step would be Mike McGlinchey. Uh, you know, they obviously took him with a very high draft pick. And last year he was one of the best in the league as far as run blocking. But, you know, we all saw uh, some of the struggles he had in pass protection and how some of the struggles or most of the struggles it seemed like came in kind of key situations late in game. So I think that that's been a a certain area of of focus for him. So Mike McGlinchey and then a few guys on defense kind of stand out and I'm just, I'll just go from, from the front to the back and then Laura, you can hop in and and give your two cents. But I think Samson Ebukam, who they, Sign is a free agent from the Rams. He's had four and a half sacks each of the past two seasons with the Rams. You know, they signed him to be the guy. You know, we don't know what's going to happen with D Ford. I think Dre Greenlaw has a chance to, you know, I I don't think it's going to be a a Willis Bowman type of thing, but Dre Greenlaw, I think, has a chance along with Fred Warner to – 
to really be a good player and be a really good tandem. And this is the first time that he's coming in as the starter from day one. I don't think he's ever going to leave the field. You know, he'll be a three down player. And then a couple of defensive backs come to mind. Emmanuel Mosley, cornerback, he's got to hold on to that job against Ambry Thomas and also safety Tarvarius Moore. Again, he's not guaranteed a starting job because of Joukowsky Tart and Marcel Harris. Both those guys uh, were injured and uh, were practicing last week when we saw them. But Tarvarius Moore, he has the speed. He's, he's a playmaker. He's added some weight and gotten stronger. So we'll see if any of those guys on defense can kind of take that next step. The name that really stands out to me in that group, I, I think Ebukam is one to look out for. Um, he'll be, you know, he's new to the Niners this year, so I think that having that, it, it's hard to have the comparison. Obviously, you've been able to see him play with the Rams, but um, I, I'm going to hold off on him, and I'm going to go with Emmanuel Mosley. The reason being is that now that Richard Sherman is potentially gone, we don't know what his status is. We don't know which team he's going to go to. He could potentially be back with the Niners, not likely, but maybe. He was no doubt one of the, the leaders on all of the defense, for sure in the cornerbacks. Somebody's got to step up in that group and say, I'm the leader now. And Emmanuel Mosley has been around for a while. He's, he's been under the wing of Richard Sherman, and I think he has the potential to really have a – have a moment where he takes ownership of that group. He's, he's not necessarily a, a leader type. You know, he, he's a very quiet guy, um, but he would be one of those guys you just, you know, lead by example, I guess, you know, would be yeah. the, the kind of thing where, you know, as long as he takes care of his job and, and, you know, shuts down or limits the production of the receiver that he's covering on a snap in snap out basis, you know, that's what the 49ers will, will certainly be looking for. And we're going to step aside for just a minute here from big O tires, actually less than a minute here from big O tires. And on the other side, let's talk about some of the rookies that you think the draft picks that, that we think have the best chance to make a huge impact year one. It's the Memorial Day sale at Big O Tires. Get up to $250 in savings. Save $100 instantly on select tires and get a free basic alignment. Spend $500 or more using your Big O credit card and get a $50 mail-in rebate only at Big O Tires. All right, we're back on 49ers Talk. We are just talking about players on the team, some of the veterans graduating from you know good player status to potential Pro Bowl or All Pro status. And now... You know, the, the rookies are, yeah, the 49ers are expecting, you know, something from this rookie class. You know, they expect contributions and, you know, the, the, can the, we do a, can we do a name at the same time and see if we have the same person? Okay. We're talking What's about here? the rookie who will make the biggest impact this season. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to count okay. it down? Yeah, I'll count it down. Okay. Three, two, one. Trey Aaron Sermon. Banks. Okay. Okay, so I said, Aaron, same page. I said Aaron Banks, you said Trey Sermon. Which ties into part of my Raheem Mostert discussion yeah. earlier in that now that you have all these running backs, it's going to be hard. The time, there's, we say it all the time. I think you've said it today. There's one football. There is only, only one football. One. And that's why I picked Aaron Banks because uh, you could have no footballs and he would still make an impact <laughs> because he's an offensive lineman. Although that'd be kind of tough to keep score and you know, all that stuff. But I haven't thought that one through. I do think Aaron Banks is uh, – he's my number two. And everybody's wondering, why haven't you said Trey Lance? That's what everyone's wondering right now. And it's for the reason that Jimmy Garoppolo – I'm under the belief that Jimmy Garoppolo will be the starter heading into the season. If Trey Lance were to be the starter day one in week one, if that is the case, I would have him at the top of my list. Mm -hmm. I just don't think that's going to be how it p plays out. Yeah, because, I mean, if he can, you know, anything happens to Jimmy or, or if he w beats Jimmy out to start the season, I mean, clearly Trey Lance would have the biggest impact on the year. And it could go both ways, right? I mean, it could be a, a positive impact or it could be a negative impact or it could be kind of in the middle. But, you know, I, I don't think anybody would be expecting Trey Lance necessarily to just step in and start at his age, the fact that he's only played in one game in the past year and a half. So that's, you know, we talked a little bit about that last week, and I think there are some questions here. Well, well, before we get to the questions about the quarterbacks, 
uh, th- there was a question from Christopher A. When will Trey Lance, Trey Sermon, and Ambry Thomas sign their rookie contracts? What's the holdup? You know, the thing is, I, I don't even really follow this stuff anymore as far as the the contracts because, you know, the, the money is already laid out. The years are laid out. The last time I followed a contract situation was Michael Crabtree. But trust me, there's no, you know, I think they, they haggle a little bit over – um, offset language and how much of the money is fully guaranteed as opposed to partially guaranteed with Trey Lance, it'll all be guaranteed. So, you know, there's just no reason, you know, I don't think they've, I remember Solomon Thomas ran out on the practice field first day of training camp a few years back. Uh, but that was about the closest that it came to spilling over and, and a guy missing a, a practice. So I don't, I just don't think there's anything to worry about. Um, it's just part of it. Um, and while we're talking, I mean, it's just time that'll, that'll happen with time. Yeah. Yeah. And the 49ers already have at least half of their, their draft cap class signed. So I think they're fine. Um, you know what I was just thinking about? How much does our podcast producer hate us right now? Brandon, shout out to you uh, for me doing the countdown and saying stuff at the same time. Yeah, probably, I, probably a ten on a scale of one to ten. You think so? Yeah. You mean uh, you think he hates us more today than usual? Maybe I think yeah. so. maybe just me. I think you're still in his good graces. Oh wow! I won't do that again for six months. <laughs> maybe next time we we need to coordinate and see if we're going to be doing the same name. That's true, but it's more fun if you don't. It's true. Yeah. Um, hey, a little bit of you know, one transaction that will be coming down this week. The 49ers are going to sign James Burgess. He's kind of a journeyman linebacker uh, to a one-year contract. It'll be tough for him to make the team because they already have, obviously, Fred Warner, Dre Greenlaw, Aziz Alshire, Demetrius Flanagan Fowles. They signed Nathan Gary, a four-year veteran who played with the Eagles. They signed him in the offseason. And also, you know, some young guys who've never played in an NFL game, Jonas Griffith, who was an undrafted rookie last year, and then this year, a couple of undrafted rookies, Jason Hilliard from Ohio State and Elijah Sullivan from Kansas State, and the corresponding move will happen after June 1, and that'll be Weston Richburg's retirement. That'll become official, and the 49ers will clear $1 million in cap savings with Weston Richburg announcing his retirement. And I think that leads us straight into... Leo Jones. Julio Jones. Julio Jones. There's we, how many weeks have we been talking about this now? Two weeks well, now. You know, we, it, we haven't really devoted a whole lot of time because I think both you and me are kind of of the opinion that, you know, it, it seems unlikely just because yeah. they want a first rounder. They the, want a first rounder. is what the, the Falcons want for him, which is understandable. Yeah. And the 49ers don't have that to offer. They don't, and they don't have it to offer in 2022 or 2023. Now, I've seen some other uh, reports that, you know, the Falcons would probably settle for a second rounder. So, I mean, I, and here's a question, um, B.D. Agnati about the Rams and Julio Jones, and L.A. Is, a, is up against it as far as no first rounders, and are they just bluffing? Are they going to make a a run. Well, the kind of late news from Sunday, uh, Mike Florio of Pro Football Talk said that the, the Rams are out of the running for Julio Jones. And, you know, I, I don't, there, there hasn't been anything solid or concrete that's really connected the 49ers to the Falcons and Julio Jones. But at the same time, I, I certainly wouldn't rule it out because the 49ers have been you know, a lot of times when they made these trades, you know, whether it was Buckner, where, whether it was the trade up to number three, um, they kind of come out of nowhere. You know, there's no build up to it. There's no, uh, you know, inkling or, uh, you know, speculation or, or rumors or reports that the 49ers are involved and then it just kind of happens. So we'll see where that goes. But I would think that, that something would happen sooner than later uh, with Julio Jones. And well, uh, I also heard, I think it was a report from Diana Rossini of ESPN that Russell Wilson had actually talked to Julio Jones about their potential pairing. So the Seahawks are very much, it sounds like, in conversations with the Falcons to maybe land Julio Jones. And you know the 49ers don't want that to happen. No. I wonder, well, God, they, the Seahawks have so many receivers. I just don't know that it I know. makes sense for them. But I, I, wonder if, I wonder if Russell Wilson is able to get Julio Jones on the team if – uh, my new uh, Seahawks friend would have a different opinion of their quarterback. I think so. I think 
if he's able to get Julio Jones, he might change his mind. I think that's, so. I just, I can't, honestly, I can't believe that. You don't, that's the type of, and I, I don't think, I'm with you, I don't think that that reflects the entire yeah. Seahawks fan base by any stretch of the imagination. But come on, you got Russell Wilson I, as your quarterback. Yeah, I know. And I've okay, never I don't want to get sidetracked too much on that. I've but. never seen a 49er fan get so heated in defending a Seahawks player <laughs> than, than what I saw Saturday night. And rightfully so. I'm I glad that so. somebody's standing up for Wilson. Yeah, so here's one. In Weston 20, uh, because he, in Weston believes that if the 49ers were to make a run for Julio Jones, it just wouldn't be draft capital, that they'd have to throw in a good player on a rookie contract. Um, you know, and he mentioned Debo Samuel. No. Yeah, I just don't think so either. Because I, part of it, I think, from the Falcons' standpoint is – you know, I think part of the reason you'd want the draft picks if you're the Falcons is that you'll have that young player for for four years on a very controlled salary, whereas Debo Samuel, you know, he has two years left on his contract, and then it's going to take, I would assume, if he stays healthy and plays well, it's going to take a nice contract to keep him around. And so I, I just think that they'd probably rather have the – the draft pick rather than the player because of the added cost that it would take to keep the player around beyond the the term of his contract. Yeah. I just, it was an easy no for me to say that. I think I get the sense that the 49ers really like their homegrown guys and you might say, okay, well, what about DeForest Buckner then? No one's off the table, but also going back to what I was talking about earlier in that, Kyle Shanahan really likes a specific type of wide receiver. Mm-hmm. And Debo Samuel, it's hard for me to think of a guy more fitting than Debo Samuel for that role in what Kyle Shanahan wants. He wants somebody that can run. He wants somebody that can make plays. He wants somebody that is a jack of all trades. And Debo Samuel is that. And I just, they're not quick. The DeForest Buckner trade was very difficult for the Niners. It was not something I don't think that they wanted to do. I think it was something that felt necessary to do in, a, in order to set up their future. They're not letting guys go that are homegrown like that, great picks. They're not just letting them fly off the shelf. I, I, don't, I just don't see that happening, not for Julio Jones. When you've got somebody, Julio Jones is 32 years old, not saying that he doesn't have playing time left in his career. I do believe that he does, but you're not going to make that trade off, or I don't think the Niners would. Yeah, I mean, well, Julio Jones is really good, and he's got three years left on his deal. And yes, he was injured last year, but you know, I think you know you could. He hadn't been injured much leading up to that, and you know, he's always seems like he always has fifteen hundred yards receiving. The thing with Julio Jones though, was maybe he was negatively impacted by you know the no training camp, the no off season program, and maybe that's the reason he was injured. So. I don't know. Hey, here's a question from Brandon. And the question is why Jimmy G refuses to restructure his contract to build a better team after missing all the games. And the 49ers don't want him to restructure. You know, they've never asked him to restructure. He, I'm sure he would. Um, and I don't know if Brandon is referring to why doesn't he take a pay cut? 49ers haven't approached him for a pay cut. In fact, that was one of the big things whenever they made that trade from nine to three and gave up all the draft capital, John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan, and I'm assuming Prague Marate went to the York family and said, are you okay if we pay Jimmy Garoppolo 25 million this season and we still take a quarterback number three? And he was like, yes, absolutely. So um, whenever you restructure, you're basically pushing, it's credit card spending. You know, you're, you're pushing some of the money to the future. And right now, the 49ers have right around $18 million in cap room, and that'll jump up a little bit when Weston Ritzburg, when his retirement goes through. But only Jacksonville, the Jets, Cincinnati, Cleveland, the Chargers, Denver, and Carolina, those are the only teams that have more cap space than the 49ers. So the short answer is Jimmy Garoppolo has not refused anything. The team hasn't approached him about doing anything with his contract because there's no reason to. They have plenty of cap space to do what they want to do. So that would be, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, Garoppolo, you know, now that they've made that trade, maybe there would be a little bit of reluctance on, on his part to do anything, but I'm sure he would, he would do a contract restructure that makes his $25 million guaranteed 
for this season because right now it's not guaranteed. If if they were to whatever cut or trade him or release him, I guess uh, because if he gets traded, he'd still make that money. But um, you know, guys want guaranteed money, and that's where. Uh, that's where the 40 hours could do a restructure with him to basically guarantee that money. But there's just no reason for them to do that right now. Yeah. I think what you're saying is that Jimmy G hasn't done anything wrong here. He hasn't been asked to restructure. You know, you have to put yourself in their shoes at, at some point and say, what would I do if I were in Jimmy Garoppolo's position? And the only reason, like you just said, is to get guaranteed money since it's not guaranteed right now, heading into the 2021 season, Jimmy G is going to receive one eighteenth of his salary. So every game he plays, he'll get that money. But it, but like you said, it's not guaranteed. So the only scenario where I can see him doing any type of restructuring is to make sure that it would be guaranteed. And I just think that this is going to continue how it is with the 49ers are probably happy with it. it. I'm sure Jimmy G's probably happy with it outside of it not being guaranteed. So there's not really any reason for this to change. Yeah. Uh, M. Chiapara says, could we realistically see Garoppolo start every game and Lance take snaps here and there, sort of like Jalen Hurts with the Eagles last year? Or do you think Shanahan will hold off on Lance until he's ready to start? I, I think the 49ers are going to try to win football games. I mean, their, their roster, you know, they signed so many guys on one-year deals this offseason. They got a veteran roster. It's an experienced roster. It's a roster that's ready to win. And so I think Kyle Shanahan owes it to himself. I think he owes it to the organization. He owes it to the fan base. But maybe more importantly, he owes it to everybody in that locker room to play the quarterback that gives the 49ers the best chance of winning football games. And so is it realistic that Garoppolo could start every game like he did in 2019? Absolutely. Yes, yes, it is. And I also think, uh, depending on how well Trey Lance comes along, that he can have packages in every game where Trey Lance gets out there and, and is kind of uh, is allowed to take baby steps as he learns the offense and learns the NFL game. Yeah, I think that that would make sense. It would make sense for Kyle Shanahan to get Trey Lance out on a football field again in, act, in playing time on an NFL field. I don't think... I, I, I'm with you. I think there, there are going to be specific scenarios where they're going to use him, but it's so hard to predict this out because we don't know how Jimmy Garoppolo is going to play. If Jimmy Garoppolo is struggling for a significant period of time, I think we'll see Trey Lance come out. But if he's not, and I'm not talking about a couple of downs, I'm talking about a few games, consistent struggles, or if he were to unfortunately have an injury or something like that, that's where we're going to see Trey Lance. But I think we'll see him sporadically. I don't get the sense that Kyle Shanahan is just going to hold him back just for the sake of holding him back. I think, mm -hmm. like you said, they want to win football games. They're going to do whatever it takes to win football games, and they also want to win football games next year and the next year and the next year. And in order to do that, they've got to get Trey Lance some more experience because – as we've said so many times, no fault of his own, but Trey Lance did, only got to play one college football game last year. So it's been a long time since he has seen football action. And not just that, he's also a rookie. So you've got to get NFL experience and you've got to get back on the football field and get your feet back under you. So let's make one point though, because I don't think we want to put like a ceiling on Trey Lance, right? No. Yeah. And, and I think that you know, teams will often say that, like, we don't want to just say, hey, this is going to be your role. Trey Lance, it's possible. And I guess we probably haven't talked about this enough. It's possible that, you know, what we see out there on the practice field, you know, some of his, you know, he hasn't been super accurate, the, the practice size that I've seen, but he's just learning his way too. You know, so he's feeling his way through this. He's learning the playbook. I'm sure his head is spinning. He's learning NFL defenses. He's doing all this stuff. I mean, after every throw, I see him and Rich Scangarello talking. So it could be, you know, when they break away here, they have uh, practices this week, practices next week, and then the three-day mini camp the week after that. And then they break for like 40 days, and then they come back. It could be when he comes back for training camp, he's ready to roll. You know, it could be that that he pops out like, oh my goodness, this guy, you know, he's put good use 
to those 40 days. And now he's got it. He's locked in. He's playing naturally. And it could be that the 49ers go, oh, my gosh, this is the why we drafted this guy. Let's get him out there. But I think you and I are also kind of saying he's in a pretty distinct disadvantage because Jimmy Garoppolo has been in this league a long time. And Jimmy Garoppolo, when he's been healthy, has been a pretty good quarterback. And the, you know, the only season he was healthy, he had one of the better seasons statistically that a 49ers quarterback has ever had. When you talk about yards passing, touchdowns, completion percentage, yards per attempt, all that stuff. But hey, the door is wide. Well, I, I don't know if it's wide open, but the door is open for Trey Lance to just knock the socks off of Kyle Shanahan and win that starting job. But I just think it's a really difficult ask of him, and people shouldn't like be placing the, these expectations of he's the number three pick in the draft. He needs to start as a rookie. If he's not starting, he must be a bust. They must be disappointed in him. And I just don't think that that's how you want to approach this, or that's you know, that's not the thought process. It's it's he's he's got a pretty good quarterback ahead of him right now, and it's going to take a lot for Trey Lance to win that job, but it's possible. Yeah, and that's just not how the 49ers feel. It's not going to be Jimmy Garoppolo throws one interception, get Trey Lance in. That's not how the 49ers feel about this, and that's my only worry heading into this season with having fans back too, which I am so excited yeah. to have fans back. Um, I'm excited to get back there too. I'm sure all of you are excited to get back to, to Levi Stadium as well, but don't, don't have this – unrealistic expectation both on Jimmy Garoppolo and Trey Lance. I don't think the 49ers do. I think that they have a very good handle on their quarterback situation. Let's let John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan do what they do, be the general manager and the head coach and make those decisions about what's going to be best for the football team. And I think if you can trust that and trust those two, then you're going to have a lot more of a peaceful 2021 football season. If you're a Niners fan, it could get really out of control if you start there are going to be questions. If Jimmy Garoppolo has a bad game, and I'm sure he's going to have a bad game. Every quarterback has a bad game. You're going to have bad moments. You're going to have make bad decisions. Don't be so quick to call on Trey Lance. But I do think it's a good point that you bring up about maybe it does kind of sound like we've been putting restrictions or kind of a ceiling on Trey Lance. This guy is really good. He's really talented. Why did the 49ers trade up to get Trey Lance? I think it goes without saying. So it's not that he's not capable. It's what's going to set him up for the best success in the future. And I don't think that's throwing him out to the Lions day one, game one, and then having to carry this pressure and this weight on your shoulder. Do you know what you just did? What did I just do? Throwing, the, throwing him out to the Lions. Oh, they're playing the Lions. How perfect. I'm going to have to oh store God. that you're, in the memory bank. You're so good that you didn't even try to do that. My gosh. It's just natural. What can I say? So here's where maybe there could be a disappointment. And this question comes from at Lynn Daly, who will be QB3 for the 49ers? If it's Trey Lance, I think – wouldn't that be a disappointment? You know, like like the Packers with Jordan Love, you know, they traded up to get him. Obviously, it was in the middle of the first round. It wasn't number three overall. But he did not suit up or play a game all season. That That's would be not a, happening. That's I wouldn't not think happening. so. I wouldn't think so because of what we talked about. Wouldn't you, even if he's not ready to take over, wouldn't you still want him to at least have that threat of, hey, let's put him in and do this kind of play or that kind of play or show run and, and play action and throw the ball down the field. So, but that, I, I think that would, that'd be a disappointment if he's the number three. Yeah, I think so for sure. And I don't think that that's going to happen. I also think that you have to manage um, mentality and, and a guy's mental game as well. If Trey Lance has taken number three overall and the 49ers are telling him you're the future but you're not dressing out on game days. Yeah. That's all part of it. As silly as it might sound to us sitting here, that's a huge part of this game. <laughs> Mayoka's adjusting his eyes. Yeah, yeah, over the microphone. Um, but I, I think that would just be a mental hurdle that you don't, is unnecessary to put on Trey Lance. I don't yeah. see that happening. Who do you actually think it'll be? I, I think Josh Rosen would be interesting. And I think that he, I just, 
his journey in the NFL baffles me so it, much. It's just baffling. I bet it baffles him too. I'm sure it does. Yeah. Um, it, yeah. I just would like to see him not have a shot to take this thing over. That's not what I mean, but be more in it. Right. Yeah. And let, let's face it, you know, the, one of the, I, I saw some of the comments to that question about the quarterback, you know, the third quarterback and people are going, well, if it gets to that point, the season's lost anyway. So, you know, who cares? But no, I mean, um, I still think it's going to be Nate Sudfeld. You know, I, I just think that money talks and the fact that they gave him a nice chunk of change, guaranteed money, like $250,000, I think is what it was. Yeah, I think um, right. I think that kind of shows which way they're, they're leaning there. So you say Rosen. I would think that most people would like to see Rosen just because yeah. we know he was, you know, a top 10 pick and, you know, he came into the league with a little bit of fanfare and he started games as a rookie with the Cardinals, beat the 49ers twice, by the way. But Nate Sudfeld, um, you know, it's kind of, I don't know. I mean, Rich Gangarella knows him, coached him last year with the Eagles. So we'll see. Um, Here's the thing with that, Matt. You're going – you're doing the smart thing. You're following the money. You're saying this is what the 49ers, you're not going to put money where your mouth is. You know, that, oh, you're doing the smart thing. I'm going fully emotional. Mm -hmm. Fully yeah. emotional. Well, decision. and like, yeah, what you want to see. see Josh Rosen. Well, here's the thing, right? I mean, we know Josh Rosen's a talented guy. You know, he was a first round draft pick for crying out loud. You know, Nate Sudfeld was not a first-round draft pick. So you always look at it like, well, he must have entered the league with a lot more talent and, uh, you know, promise. Uh, whereas, you know, Sudfeld, you know, I don't know if you remember that fiasco last year, the final game of the season with the Eagles, where they just threw him out there in the second half of that game. And, and really, uh, you know, the coach, Doug Peterson, just kind of lost control of that whole situation and got all kinds of national scrutiny. And, you know, it seemed like he was, I mean, this guy just had won a Super Bowl what, three or four years earlier. And, and now he's out of a job just because of how things steamrolled and Nate Sudfeld was in the middle of that. So speaking of the last game of the season, because this is what I thought of when I saw this question, this comes from Mike. You know, the 49ers and the entire NFL now, 17-game regular season. There's a bye week, so 18-week season heading into the playoffs. Mike asks, will the 49ers treat one game this year as a load management game like some of the, NFL, uh, some of the NBA teams do with their players uh, because the season is a little bit longer? And, I mean, the, the reason the NBA season is, what, 80 games? I think it's 82. Um, or is it 82? Whatever. Yeah. It's 80 or 82 games. The, the NFL season is 17 games. So every game is huge. And there's just not a chance that a team is going to sit a player or sit multiple veteran players when they don't have to. You know, so they might be a little bit more judicious if, if a guy, you know, three quarters of the way through the season is nursing a hamstring injury or a quad or whatever. Maybe you give them a, another week of rest to make sure that, that it doesn't get worse. But I no, I don't think there'll be load management games like we see in the NBA. Yeah. Not a chance. Every single game counts in the NFL. 17 games is still nothing compared to it was 72 this year, but it's normally 82 for the NBA. Nothing compared to that. Nothing compared to major league baseball. You don't, you don't have the, the luxury of having a load management game. Right. But I, I think when you get to the end of the season, yeah, you hope that you can have a load management game where you're not having to start your starters. If you're already solidified in the playoffs and already have a top seed. Sure. But outside of that, there's no load management happening. Yeah. I, I guess the 40 hours would love every team would love to, uh, you know, whatever, have their playoff situation wrapped up. Uh, heading into the final game of the season. In the Fort Harris case, that would be Sunday, January 9th against the Rams. So, you know, I guess from the 49ers standpoint, they would love to have that luxury of being able to say, okay, uh, you know, whatever, let's, let's get this guy in, let's get that guy in, you know, the, whatever, Trent Williams, uh, hey, let's give you a break for this game and, and play the backup quarterback, whoever it might be. So that, I'm sure that would be a, a perfect scenario for the 49ers. Yeah, I think so too. Um, I don't want to let this moment go by. I hope everybody had a, enjoyed their Memorial Day weekend. But uh, I, I do think as the podcast ends today, 
I think we need to take a moment and, and I hope that all of us can can sit and maybe silence for a few minutes and, and think about the real sacrifice. You know, we're able to sit here and do this podcast and talk to all of you and be on Twitter and go to football games and have football games because of the sacrifice of the people that have paid the ultimate price in our country. So I'd like for all of us, if if you got time to just sit for a minute and and think about our veterans and the people that have have given their lives so that we can have freedom on this Memorial Day and every day. And we live in a great country, the United States of America, where we are able to have freedom and and do the things that we want to do. And that's all because people have died for our freedom. 